Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. The people of the Most High has been conditioned by the propaganda educational system of false history and illusions. Everyone must unlearn what was taught to them by the B system and put on the new mind. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. By renewing our minds, we give the Most High the opportunity to download the truth into our spirit. When we understand how the Most High operate, the closer we will get to the Most High. Israelites, you must understand that sin separate us from the Most High. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. When the people of the Most High are far from him, we are not under his protection. The kingdom of darkness gains the opportunity to program his will into our minds. The way Satan is able to enforce his ideology into the minds of the people is through the beast system. Most people refer to the beast system as white supremacy. Israelites and strangers, whomever control the mind, control the person. Satan is the god of this world. That is how Satan is able to deceive the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. For multiple generations, Israelites and heathens have been undergoing mind control by the kingdom of darkness. The purpose of the mental programming, to accept a false narrative of the words of the Most High. Religion was born through heathens without the Spirit of the Most High, trying to interpret what only the Holy Spirit could reveal. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The world despises and rejected the Elohim of Israel. Therefore, the world cannot receive his Spirit. The Israelites have the Spirit of the Most High in them. However, the Spirit of the Most High will remain dormant until Israelites seek the face of the Most High and repent. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Satan utilized religion to control all the kingdoms and people of this world. Satan know everyone will not accept the same faith. Satan created multiple religions and made sure every faith worships him. In addition, every faith utilized some part of the Israelite culture to establish its roots. Through the misinterpretation of the scriptures, many people are living under the wrath of the Most High. Religion take on the persona of the Elohim of Israel. A system built by Satan only worships Satan. Therefore, Israelites, strangers, and heathens that believe they are close to the Most High are far from the Most High. Satan utilized the doctrines of devils to change the narrative of the so-called gospel. In addition, Satan has taken the identity and privilege of the people the Most High created and gave those privileges and identity to his seed, stealing the Most High's glory. The scripture said, Yah will not share his glory with anyone. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. 
By Satan taking credit for what the Most High created, he is stealing the glory of the Most High. Remember, Satan wants to be like the Most High. Pride led to Satan's downfall. He wanted to exalt himself higher than the Most High. Yah cast him out of the heavenly places onto earth. The Most High is the Alpha and the Omega. There is none greater than him. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. For Satan to maintain his dominance in the physical realm, he had to create a system that would keep him in power. The longer the people of the Most High stay in sin, the longer the kingdom of darkness could rule the physical realm. That is why it is important for Satan to cause a separation between Yah and his people. It is important, Israelites, to repent of known and unknown sins. By remaining humble and having a repented heart would keep the presence of the Most High in your life. That is why the Most High command his people to humble themselves and seek his face. By doing this, Yah would heal our land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. If Israelites would humble themselves, repent, and pray, they would see more of the Most High's presence in their lives. In addition, the kingdom of darkness would have a hard time trying to deceive them. Israelites and strangers, it is important to understand how the Most High operate. The Most High do not, I repeat, do not operate in the flesh. The scriptures say Yah's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are greater than our thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Many Israelites and strangers gain their wisdom and understanding from the beast system. Now is the time to put on the new man, just as the words of the Most High command. Bloodline is the way the Most High differentiate his creation. When the Most High spread the people all over the world, Yah divided the earth according to bloodline. Every family clan is a bloodline. Everyone who descends from Ham inherited the portion the Most High gave to Ham. The same for Shem and Japheth. As the family clan grow, they migrate and occupy the land inherited from the progenitor of the bloodline. The Most High did not consider appearance when he divided the earth nor skin color. Remember, the Most High's creation is a dark hue people. The Most High utilized bloodline to separate each family clan. The kingdom of darkness used race. Satan always imitate the Most High. That is how he deceived many to follow him. In addition, brainwash the masses with false ideology. Many strangers and heathens cannot accept that the Most High has selected a specific bloodline as his chosen people. And the chosen people are not to mix their seed with anyone outside the Israelite bloodline. But thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. As you heard from the scriptures, the Most High said, Family. Yah did not say people from all nations. He said, you are the only family that I know. Bloodline is based on a family clan. Yah selected Jacob's bloodline as his chosen people. He named his chosen people Israelite after the progenitor of the bloodline. I'm not here to repeat the lies of Satan. I am here to tell you the truth. I'm not here to feed your emotions and your ego with lies. The words of the Most High is sharper than any edge sword. The word of the Most High is meant to cut you. The words of the Most High is meant to penetrate your spirit deep enough to bring forth change. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, 
and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When the words of the Most High cut you, it is meant to bring the necessary change to save your life. Many Israelites and strangers do not know how to react when the words of the Most High cut them. They are quick to blame the messenger and scream racism and hatred. If you refuse to submit to thus says the Most High, you will be cast out of the presence of the Most High, just as the Most High cast Satan from his presence when he sinned. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Israelites are not excluded. The Most High will cast you out of his presence. Israelites are living in the land of their captivity, the promised land that belonged to the descendants of Jacob. Israelites no longer are in control of that land. The Israelites have been homeless since 70 AD. The mixed seed are not exempt from the judgment of the Most High. Dear mixed and biracial people, you are a testimony to your parents' sin. If you have a problem, you need to address your parents, not the people who had nothing to do with your existence. The truth must come forward regardless of your emotions. The purpose of truth is to set you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The interpretations of the words of the Most High coming from the beast system's religious institutions are incorrect. The Most High has sent his anointed to spread the truth of his words. That is why the awakening is happening right now. The awakening is not going to support the beast system's lies, nor will the awakening reinforce the lies taught to you in the church. If the messages you are hearing in the awakening support the pagan church doctrines, there would be no need for an awakening. The Most High would not be able to justify his wrath towards the workers of iniquity. Many strangers and Israelites need to learn to control their emotions and listen with an ear to hear. The kingdom of darkness took the culture and belief of the Israelite bloodline and started religion. Therefore, every religion has some form of Israelite custom embedded in their faith. Religion has destroyed the culture of the Israelite family. Satan has diluted the Israelite's royal bloodline with his interpretation of the scriptures. Through religion, Satan has deceived many to believe they are Israelites. Heathens who are from another bloodline are claiming the Israelite heritage. The people who know they are not Israelites, they have accepted the replacement doctrine of spiritual Israel to claim a piece of the Israelite bloodline. Everyone wants to be an Israelite, but nobody wants the struggle of the real descendants of Jacob. Hello, I will make thee small among the heathen. And despised among men. The most hated group of people are the original people made in the most highest image, black people. Not everyone who is black is an Israelite. If everyone is claiming the Israelite bloodline, what happened to the other bloodlines the scriptures spoke of? Bloodlines such as the Moabites, the Ishmaelites, the Edomites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the others. The Most High said his people would be a few among the heathens. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. The kingdom of darkness exclude all the bloodlines and focus on the Israelites' bloodline. The religious institutions classify everybody outside of the Israelite bloodline as Gentiles. By doing this, Satan can eliminate the Most High's bloodline system. The beast system combines multiple bloodlines to establish race. Satan invented religion to enforce race. If the people do not know their bloodline, how they can challenge the synagogue of Satan? When the beast system say the Jewish people are the descendants of the Israelites, who can challenge if many do not know their bloodline? The kingdom of darkness do not want you to know the impostor's bloodline. Their blood does not trace back to Jacob. That is why they use race. Race is determined by your appearance and place of birth. Israelites, if race was the sole determining factor to identify a person, why must the heathens need a sample of your DNA to tell you about your family tree and where your family migrated from? They compare your DNA sample with the people who share the same DNA or bloodline. 
Israelites, beware of the heathens DNA company. They are not honest with the results. Any DNA company that I say the imposters descend from Jacob is not to be trusted. The heathens use DNA to study you and to better claim your history and bloodline. This is how the Most High's bloodline system operate. The progenitor of a bloodline is the key player. I need everyone to have an ear to hear. This part is important. The progenitor of any bloodline can marry the woman of his choice to create his bloodline. The children produced from the progenitor of the bloodline cannot marry outside of the bloodline. The descendants must marry within to preserve the bloodline. Every Israelite living today are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. They are the offspring of the progenitor who is Jacob. Jacob's sons are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. I will repeat, Jacob's sons are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. Jacob's sons are the progenitor of the tribe the Israelites descend from. We are known as Israelites because of our father Jacob. The sons of Israel in this generation are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. If they were, they would not have to say they are Jacob's descendants to claim the Israelite heritage. For example, I am a daughter of Zion. If I marry John Smith and Ishmaelite, the children I bear with John Smith is a new bloodline. In order for John Smith and myself to preserve our father's bloodline, we must marry within. I would have to marry a son of Israel. John Smith would have to marry an Ishmaelite woman to carry his father's bloodline. I cannot name my children after another man if those children do not belong to that man. It is rare to find a man that would allow his children to be called by another man's name. Israelites, the children you create with a heathen cannot be an Israelite, but a new bloodline. If you choose to preserve the Israelite bloodline, the Israelites must marry a daughter of Zion or a son of Israel. Only the women that descend from Jacob's bloodline are daughters of Zion. The other women who are from other bloodlines are not daughters of Zion. An Edomite woman is not a daughter of Zion. One reason the Most High allowed polygamy in the beginning to establish bloodlines. The Israelite bloodline have been established. The descendants of the original bloodlines need to preserve their bloodline to keep it from being cut off. The Most High has cut off many bloodlines. Also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. If a son of Israel decide that he doesn't want to continue in the Israelite bloodline, he will be an Israelite, however his children will not be. His children with the strange woman will carry his name and will be known as his descendants. That is how bloodlines are established. Jacob, Ishmael, Esau, and Isaac are all Hebrews. Ishmael and Isaac are brothers. Esau and Jacob are brothers. Isaac is Esau and Jacob's father, and Ishmael is Jacob and Esau's uncle. All except Isaac are a progenitor of a bloodline. All the other men mentioned, their descendants are named after them. Israelites are Hebrew because Jacob's mother, Rebekah, is Abraham's niece. Isaac is Abraham's son. Abraham is a Hebrew. Isaac married within to keep his bloodline pure. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Jacob married within, keeping the Hebrew bloodline pure. Jacob's wives came from his mother's side of the family, preserving the Hebrew bloodline. And Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban thy mother's brother. Jacob did not sleep with various women from all nations to bring forth Hebrew children. He married within. 
the Most High wanted to transfer Abraham's everlasting covenant to Jacob and his descendants. Yah made Jacob the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. Jacob's wives are the matriarch, and they were related to Jacob. The righteous men of Yah did not sleep around with strange women from all the nation of their choosing to bring forth Israelite children. However, there are many scriptures warning the Israelites not to marry strange women and men, in addition to put away the strange women and their children. The scripture said a bastard cannot enter Yah's congregation. The scripture said this, not me. I guess the scriptures are racist. In the Most High's creation, there are no such thing as race, only bloodlines. Therefore, I cannot be racist. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. The strange women have no foundation in the Israelite bloodline. When I say strange women, I want Israelites to picture the indigenous heathen women. There are indigenous heathen black women, just as there are indigenous heathen black men. An example would be the indigenous Indians on the continent of India or in Ethiopian. Although they are indigenous and a part of the most highest creation, they are of another bloodline. Ethiopians are not the daughters of Zion or the sons of Israel. In the beast system, the Ethiopians would be labeled black even though Ethiopians descend from Ham's bloodline through Cush. Not all Ethiopians are Cushites or Hamatic. There are Israelites labeled as Ethiopians. Remember, Israelites were scattered in all the kingdoms of this world. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaphtor, and the Syrians from Kerr? The woman you marry will determine if you'll pass on your father's bloodline or start your own bloodline. In order to pass on your father's bloodline, you must marry within. The sons of Israel who marry the strange woman are cutting off the Israelite bloodline to start their own. The daughters of Zion who marry outside of their bloodline are spoiling their seed as well. Ham, Shem, and Japheth are brothers. However, all three form three different bloodlines. From the three brothers, the whole earth was populated. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Bloodline is what differentiate all families on earth. Bloodline is a family clan that identify a person or a nation. The Israelite bloodline is not an all-inclusive bloodline like the black race. The royal bloodline is to remain pure. Not all who claim the Israelite heritage are Israelites, just like the imposters of today. I can never understand how the imposters can call anyone anti-Semitic as if they are the only descendants of Shem. Shem has many descendants alive and carrying on his bloodline today. The children of the strange woman have an opportunity to be saved just like all the strangers. Just because they can be saved does not mean they are Israelites. They are not Israelites, but strangers. The children of the strangers cannot marry an Israelite. The stranger is to live among the Israelites and serve the Elohim of Israel. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants, and be one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. The strangers who wants to marry an Israelite are causing the Israelites to stumble and sin. If you genuinely love the Elohim of Israel, you will not cause his people to sin. The strangers are to serve the Most High while dwelling among the Israelites, just as Israelites are to preserve their bloodline while living among the heathens. The issue many so-called strangers have is coveting the Israelite bloodline. The Most High said you should not covet. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. If you're going to serve the Most High, you must serve him in the spirit and in truth. 
The strangers are individuals from different bloodlines who abandoned the idols of their father's house to serve the Elohim of Israel. The strangers are not spiritual Israel, nor an Israelite. The Israelites are a bloodline, a family clan chosen by the Most High. The Israelite heritage is not a religion. Race was invented by the kingdom of darkness to bring confusion, in addition to control all the bloodlines. The beast system is an enemy to the Most High. The people of the Most High should not follow the beast system. The beast system will lead you to the lake of fire. Israelites, it is important to preserve the Israelite bloodline. The Israelites who are careless with their seed will be cut off. We have a duty as the people of the Most High to be holy just as the Most High is holy. We must uphold the Most High standards. The Most High has His laws in place. We must abide in them. Israelites, do not allow the kingdom of darkness to cause you to dilute your bloodline. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old.